Hey, what's up you guys? You are watching the Kaggle Code Review Show and my name is Ilarian Garbuzo. Today we'll do the new Kaggle competition that is called Tweet Sentiment Extraction. Let's do it! Uh, let's talk a little about the code competition. Uh, the name of the code competition is Tweet Sentiment Extraction and uh, you need to extract support phrases for sentiment labels and uh, give the sen uh, sentiment of it. So with uh, all the tweets circulating every second, it is hard to tell whether the sentiment behind a specific tweet will impact the company or a person's brand for being viral, positive or devastate uh, profit uh, because it strikes a negative tone. Capturing sentiment in a language is important uh, in these times where decisions and reactions are created and updated in seconds. But uh, which words actually lead to the sentiment description? In this competition, you will need to pick out the part of the tweet, a word or phrase, that reflects the sentiment. Help build your skills in this important area with this broad dataset of tweets. Work on your technique to grab a top spot in this competition. What words in tweets support a positive, negative or neutral sentiment? How can you help make the determination using machine learning tools? So uh, it's nature language processing mm, competition. And let's look uh, in data. So we've got uh, train CSV, test CSV and uh, sample submission file. And what should we expect the data format to be? Each row contains the text of a tweet and the sentiment label. In the training center, you are provided with a word or phrase drawn from the tweet, selected text that encapsulates the provided sentiment. Make sure when parsing the CSV to remove the beginning and the quotes from the text. Feel to ensure that you don't include them in your training. And uh, what we are predicting, what our, uh, what is our label? You are tempted to predict the word or phrase for the tweet uh, that ex uh, exemplifies the provided sentiment. The, po uh, the word or phrase should include all characters within that span. The font is as allowed. So it's ID, word or phrase that support the sentiment. For example, two, very good. Five, I am neutral about this. Six, bad. And how uh, the data, uh, data sets looks like. So it's uh, value ID, a unique value. It's a text, selected text from uh, the uh, text of a tweet and the sentiment. So it's neutral, 40% of neutral, 31% uh, of positive and 28% of other. I think it's negative. Yeah, it's negative sentiment. Okay, that's how uh, our competition looks like. Uh, let's dive in uh, the kernel. I found this notebook at Chris Diot. It's a data scientist and researcher at NVIDIA from San Diego, California, United States. Thank you, Chris, for the kernel. Thank you. To examine uh, the kernel, we would use Google Colab because it's easy to share and got uh, different features as GPU runtime and so on, so on. So let's dive in. Uh, the uh, name of the kernel is TensorFlow Roberto Starter with 70% uh, on a leaderboard. This uh, notebook is a TensorFlow template for solving Kaggle's tweet sentiment extraction competition as a question and answer Roberto formulation. In this notebook, uh, we show how to tokenize the data, create question answer targets, and how to build a custom question answer head for Roberto in uh, TensorFlow. Note that uh, hugging face transformers, that's the transformers that uh, is used in this kernel, uh, don't have a TF Roberto for question answering, so we must make our own uh, from TF Roberto model. And instead of it, I used uh, the base model when uh, I was expo exploring um, and reviewing this kernel. And this notebook can achieve uh, 71 on Leaderboard with some modifications. Uh, you can also run this code offline and it will uh, save the best model ways during each of the uh, five folds of training and upload those ways to a private Kaggle dataset and attach to this notebook. 
Okay, so uh, we'll start with uh, loading the libraries and uh, data and the tokenizer. And in this kernel, the author is using hugging face transformers. So uh, in the Google call up, we need to pip install it. Uh, with pip install uh, transformers and uh, with this command we can check it so the transformers are installed uh, and uh, the libraries we would use pandas numpy for the linear algebra tensorflow keras at the back end uh, model selection we would use stratified uh, kfold and uh, we would use transformers uh, and tokenizers for the uh, and uh, LU part. So with uh, this command, Google call up import files and upload, we can upload the data from the uh, uh, Kaggle and uh, we can unzip it with this uh, line of code. So uh, that would uh, the data is looks like and uh, we can uh, make a constant uh, like mark, uh, maxlen 96, uh, upload the tokenizer uh, with a Roberto tokenizer, we would use the Roberto, uh, Roberto tokenizer and I'll show it uh, to you a little later what it's uh, what it is. Uh, we would use the pre-trained model uh, uh, called Roberto base at a uh, hugging face um, Roberto base and we can uh, give the sentiment ID positive, negative and neutral and read the data from the train CSV and uh, the data would look like text ID the text, the selected text, and the sentiment. And uh, this would be the uh, training data set, and we would work with it. Okay, a few words about the Hugging Face Tokenizer. Uh, tokenizer is in charge of preparing the inputs for a model tokenizing uh, the inputs. Uh, the library comprises tokenizers for all the models. Most of the tokenizers are available uh, in two flavors, a full Python implementation and a fast implementation based on the Rust library tokenizers. Uh, so uh, the base classes uh, implement the common methods for encoding uh, string inputs in model inputs and uh, uh, saving Python and fast tokenizers either from a local file or di uh, directory or from a pre-trained tokenizer provided by the library. Um, tokenizing, uh, converting tokens, uh, strings to IDs and back and encoding, decoding, adding new tokens to the vocabulary in a way that uh, is independent of the underlying structure, managing special tokens like mask, beginning of sentence and other tokens. So that's a little about the tokenizer. And a few words on uh, transformers. It's a state of the art uh, natural language processing for PyTorch and TensorFlow uh, made by Hugging Face. Transformers, formerly known as PyTorch transformers and PyTorch uh, pre, uh, pre trained BERT uh, models, uh, provide general purpose architectures like BERT, Roberta, that we will use in our kernel uh, for natural language understanding and natural language uh, generation with over 32 uh, pre-trained models uh, in uh, 100 plus languages. And features uh, of transformers is a high performance on uh, NLU and NLG tasks, allow better to enter for educators and practitioners like you state of the art NLP for everyone. So it's uh, for deep learning researchers, hands-on practitioners, AI, uh, ML and uh, NLP teachers and educators, low compute costs, smaller carbon footprint, uh, good API. That's uh, all you've got at Hacking Face Transformers. And in this kernel, we would use uh, Hugging Face Roberto base model. So uh, it's uh, very well known in NLP uh, community. So you can see uh, all the statistics on monthly model downloads uh, at Hugging Face. Uh, they've got pretty cool uh, and easy uh, API uh, you can use in your uh, uh, notebooks. 
and uh, let's dive in in the model description. So Roberta is a transformers model for trained on a large corpus of English data in a self-supervised fashion. This means it was pre-trained on the raw text only with no humans labeling them in any way, which is why it can uh, use lots of publicly available data with an automatic process to generate inputs and labels from those texts. More precisely, it was pre-trained with uh, the mask language modeling MLM objective. Taking a sentence, the model randomly masks 15% of the words in the input, uh, then run the entire mask sentence through the uh, model and has to predict the masked words. This is different from traditional recurrent neural networks, RNNs, that usually see the words one after the other or from after regressive models like GPT, which internally masks the future tokens. It allows the model to learn a bidirectional uh, representation of the sentence. This way the model learns an inner representation of the English language that can then be used to extract features useful for downstream tasks. Uh, you can see more details on Hugging Face Core Robert Base web page. Here is the principle of the tokenization. So we've got the text like Kaggle is a fun web place so we can tokenize it, got uh, input IDs, then uh, make an uh, attachment mask uh, and uh, take the sentiment with the start token and the end token. Okay, let's dive in in the uh, code. So we've got input IDs, attention mask, token type IDs, start tokens and add tokens. And in the for loop, uh, we would uh, find the overlap. So we need to find the text to uh, our selected text in a text. Then encode offsets and uh, make the start and end tokens with, uh, within the text. And uh, then we'll take the sentiment uh, ID. We must tokenize the test data exactly the same as we tokenize the training data and uh, then we can uh, build uh, the Roberta model with it. And now we can build a Roberta model. So we use a pre-trained Roberta base model and uh, add a custom question answer head for predictions and first tokens are input into bird model and we use birds first output uh, below uh, these are embeddings of all input tokens and uh, have uh, shape batch size max length 768 and next we apply a convolutional 1d layer and tra transform the embeddings into sh shape uh, batch size max length one we then flatten this and apply softmax for final prediction for final output from x1 uh, that has shape batch size and max len and these are now uh, hot encodings of the start tokens and x2 are the uh, end tokens indices so uh, here is uh, our model uh, we use keras as the back end here is the Barrett model uh, that we uh, got from pre-trained robert the base uh, we are using dropout, convolutional 1D, flatten uh, and the softmax activation for uh, start tokens and the, uh, the same for the end tokens. And as an optimizer uh, for uh, this model we're using Adam with a, a learning rate. And uh, the loss would be a categorical cross entropy uh, for this model. So uh, we are using metric that is called Jacquard uh, and uh, here uh, is the metric. And now we can train uh, this Roberto model. Uh, so we train with five stratified k folds based on sentiment uh, some stratification. Uh, you remember that we got three different sentiments and each fold the best model weights are saved and then reloaded before uh, prediction and test prediction. Therefore, you can uh, run this code offline and upload your five-fold models to a private Kaggle uh, dataset. Then run this notebook and comment out uh, the line uh, model feed. Instead, your notebook will load your model ways from offline training in the line. 
update this uh, to have the correct parts. Also make sure you change the K-fold seat below to match your offline training. Then this notebook will proceed to use your offline models to predict uh, off and predict test. So here is how we uh, using stratify K fold based on sentiment extraction. And for each fold, uh, we would uh, train the model uh, and uh, we got callbacks. Uh, uh, that is, uh, we're using model checkpoint to see uh, the model scores. Then we uh, feed with uh, uh, input IDs, intention mask, token type IDs, star tokens, end tokens on three epochs, 32 batch size. We would display uh, the verbs and use our callbacks. Uh, we've got the validation data. Uh, so the whole kitchen is ready and we can uh, start to train it. And at the end, we can uh, display uh, our metric, our jacquard metric. So after the training, I've got 50, uh, 0.50 and the auto got uh, 0.70 uh, and I got it because uh, of, uh, cause of I used the pre-trained uh, Roberto base and I didn't load the case and something else. So after training the model, so you can see all the scores, you can see that uh, the loss is decreasing. And overall on the uh, firefall cross validation, I got 0.50 as I told you. And we can uh, submit our predictions of uh, sentiment, uh, sentiment extraction, the selected text, and uh, here uh, how it would uh, look like. So after uh, we can make a predictions, we can uh, uh, we can use the test uh, test the uh, data set and take the selected test with the sentiment from it. So that's it, uh, that's it for the uh, sentiment extraction. And you can practice by your own with this kernel. I'll uh, give you the link on the call up. Thank you. Guys, I really need your feedback. Can you push the like button, subscribe and give me a comment what you want me to do next. Thank you. Bye.